Hi folks, I just finished my first Raspberry Pi project and I'm super excited. I wanted to share it with you. I also wanted to talk a little bit about what Raspberry Pi is and offer you some information if you're interested in getting started. This project is super simple, but it's awesome. I followed the Adafruit tutorial where I downloaded a Python script to the Raspberry Pi. That Python script queries my Gmail. If there's no unread messages in my Gmail inbox, the LED is red. But if someone sends me an email or there's an unread message, the LED changes to green. I think it's a great project. I've never used the Raspberry Pi before, nor ever programmed in Python. This still only took me about 30 minutes. And I think it's a great teaser project if you're interested in learning what the potential of something like the Raspberry Pi is, especially as you start this whole idea of integrating sensors and motors uh, in the World Wide Web, which I think is awesome. So let me show you a little bit more about this particular project. So what's a Raspberry Pi? It's actually a computer. I think this is the coolest thing to come out uh, in a long time. It's this green circuit board here. It's got a microprocessor on it, uses an SD card for memory and storage, has an HDMI or composite out for your video, ethernet jack, two USBs, I've got a keyboard and a mouse plugged in, and then this micro USB here I'm using to power the device. I've also got a ribbon cable that breaks out to this breakout board on a breadboard, and that is what I think really makes this Raspberry Pi uh, co so cool, is you've got direct input and output pins that you can use for sensors and motors, much like an Arduino. So that's one way to think about it. It's a actual computer combined with an Arduino. It's designed to run various versions of Linux, which I'll talk about later. And finally, the absolute coolest uh, part about this is this Raspberry Pi computer costs $35. So how does this work? Well, there's a Python script that I've written for this Raspberry Pi. And in fact, I haven't written it at all. That's the wrong thing to say. I downloaded it from Adafruit's tutorial, which you'll see later in this video. Adafruit's got a lot of great Raspberry Pi stuff. I highly encourage you check out their stuff. Uh, it's very intuitive for someone like me who's never really used Linux and never ever written anything in Python. But it's pretty simple. The Python script queries your Gmail, and depending on whether or not you have unread messages, it uses two output pins, in this case pins 18 and 23, with these resistors. Remember, anytime you're using something like an LED, especially the lower power LEDs, you need to have a resistor to limit the current. And if you have an unread message, it has it light green. And if you don't have any unread messages, it activates the other pin to light the LED red. Here are some helpful uh, hints and tips about the Raspberry Pi in general, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, the LED project uh, and the Adafruit tutorial that I uh, followed to do that. First of all, if you'd like to buy a Raspberry Pi, you for some reason are sort of limited right now. Only a few people sell them. I purchased mine from Newark. They are the US uh, affiliate of this company, Element 14, which I believe is a British company where um, the Raspberry Pi has been developed, which I guess is why that's who you've got to buy one from. Again, $35, they happen to be out of stock right now. These things have been very popular. Uh, but so for starters, you can get one there. If you're in a huge rush, they uh, are on eBay. I'm using the Adafruit Pi Cobbler Breakout Kit. That's the ribbon wire and this header board over here that plugs into a breadboard. You need an SD card as well. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have a hard drive. It uses the SD card as its hard drive. And on that hard drive, you need to install an operating system. I'm using Adafruit's Occidentalis, which I think is great because I intend to follow a lot of the Adafruit tutorials. And if you read here, a lot of the um, feature sets when it comes to the hardware and SSH stuff is already pre-installed or it's gonna be easier to follow along. So if you, people say this is not a beginner level um, uh, flavor of Linux for Raspberry Pi, but uh, I'm, a, I'm as beginner as it gets and I didn't have any problem. Um, you need something to watch what's go or to, as a monitor for your Raspberry Pi. You can use what's called SSH, which is a way to sort of remote desktop into it on a line level command. Um, I think it's nice to have an actual output. You can use um, a composite output or HDMI. I like HDMI. I didn't happen to have an HDMI computer monitor out, so I've got a um, small HDTV like this one that's 15 inches, although 
your you know home theater 42 inch will, would work fine as well uh, when it comes to installing Occidentalist on the uh, flashcard, I actually found there's a link here um, in in the uh, on the Adafruit page here. Sorry, to um, oh here we go. Um, follow these directions here, which links to this page, which talks about how you download this image file of the distribution and then get it onto the SD card. Um, I was trying to do this on my Mac, and I found that it actually was much easier to use this Win32 disk imager program on a PC. Uh, that's my sort of tip on there. So um, the actual tutorial, it's uh, Adafruit does a great job of walking you through these with photographs and clear instructions. Um, all I wanted to mention was, um, oh, for starters, I'm not going to cover trying to turn your Raspberry Pi into a wireless device. So you, you will need to start off with an uh, actual Ethernet cable connection. Um, this first uh, bit on SSH, that's uh, not something you're interested in, don't worry about it. I did all this project from the um, Raspberry Pi itself versus trying to log into the Pi from another computer. Um, you need its IP, that's not difficult. Um, and then the, so a lot of these installations, you should go through them, but I think most of them are already included with the uh, Adafruit Occidentalist operating system. You need obviously a green and a red LED. Um, you need two resistors. I use 100 ohm. They say 100 to 1000 would be fine. Hooking them up is very straightforward. And the only thing I really wanted to mention were a few tweaks I made in the code. Obviously here you would type in your Gmail username. That would just be the part before the at gmail.com. You type in your password. And then this uh, new mail offset equals one that the way that works is you if you have one unread message it still is the red light it's not until you have two unread that you would get the green light i was interested in showing the light uh, when you have any unread messages so i changed that value to zero and i changed the 60 seconds down to 10 seconds while i was testing and debugging because who wants to wait 60 seconds to check um, and that was it and finally just as a word of encouragement uh, I have never ever used Python before. This is literally the first time I've ever executed a Python script or code. Uh, it's not intimidating. I don't, I'm not a programmer either, so don't think that I'm being sneaky here. I really don't have much experience. Um, I've also never really used Linux before. Maybe 15 years ago for a few months, I thought I would get into it. So uh, please don't be intimidated. This is awesome. I've got some cool Raspberry Pi projects coming up and I would encourage you to dig in and again, this learn.adafruit.com here is a, uh, is a great resource for um, a lot of different cool Raspberry Pi projects.